The Kamchatka Peninsula Russian, Poluostrov Kamkatka Poluostrov Kamchatka, IPA, Place Ostrov Kame T. 8 is a 1,250 km long 780 miles peninsula in the Russian Far East, with an area of about 270,000 square kilometers 100,000 square miles. The Pacific Ocean and the Sea of Okhotsk make up the peninsula's eastern and western coastlines, respectively. Immediately offshore along the Pacific coast of the peninsula runs the 10,500-metre deep Kuril Kamchatka Trench. The Kamchatka Peninsula, the Commander Islands, and Karaginsky Island constitute the Kamchatka Krai of the Russian Federation. The vast majority of the 322,079 inhabitants are ethnic Russians, but about 13,000 Koryaks live there as well. More than half of the population lives in Petropavlovsk Kamchatsky in and nearby Yelizovo The Kamchatka Peninsula contains the volcanoes of Kamchatka, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Geography Politically, the peninsula forms part of Kamchatka Krai. The southern tip is called Cape Lopatka Lopatka is Russian for spade. The circular bay to the north of this on the Pacific side is Avacha Bay with the capital, Petropavlovsk Kamchatsky. Northward up the Pacific side, the four peninsulas are called Shipungsky Point, Kronotsky Point, Kamchatsky Point, and Ozernoy Point. North of Ozernoy Point is the large Karaginsky Bay, which features Karaginsky Island. Northeast of this off the displayed map lies Korfa Bay with the town of Tilichiki. On the opposite side is the Shelikov Gulf. The Kamchatka or Central Sredini Range forms the spine of the peninsula. Along the southeast coast runs the Vostochny Range or Eastern Range. Between these lies the Central Valley. The Kamchatka River rises northwest of Avacha and flows north down the central valley, turning east near Kluchi to enter the Pacific south of Kamchatsky Point at Ust Kamchatsk. In the 19th century, a trail led west from near Kluchi over the mountains to the Tegel River and town, which was the main trading post on the west coast. North of Tegel is Koryak Okrug. South of the Tegel is the Icha River. Just south of the headwaters of the Kamchatka, the Bistreya River curves southwest to enter the Sea of Okhotsk at Bolsharetsk, which once served as a port connecting the peninsula to Okhotsk. South of the Bistreya flows the Golijina River. Petropavlovsk Kamchatsky and the settlements in the central part of the peninsula are connected by highway leading to Ust Kamchatsk. The road is asphalt in its southern part and near habitations, but changes to gravel about halfway north. Another highway connects the local capital with Bolsharetsk. Bus service is available on both roads. Most other roads are gravel-covered or over coverless ground, requiring off-road capable vehicles. There is semi-regular passenger transportation with aircraft. The obvious circular area in the central valley is the Klyuchevskaya Sopka, an isolated volcanic group southeast of the curve of the Kamchatka River. West of Kronotsky Point is the Kronotsky Biosphere Reserve with the Valley of Geysers. At the southern tip is the southern Kamchatka Wildlife Refuge with Kuril Lake. There are several other protected areas on the peninsula. Climate Kamchatka receives up to 2,700 mm of precipitation per year. This is much higher than the rest of eastern Russia, and is due to prevailing westerly winds blowing over the Sea of Japan and picking up moisture. This then rises as it hits the higher topography of the peninsula, and condenses into rain. The summers are moderately cool, and the winters are rather stormy, but the storms rarely produce lightning. Although Kamchatka lies at similar latitudes to Scotland, cold Arctic winds from Siberia combined with the cold Oyashio Sea current keep the peninsula covered in snow from October to late May. Under the Köppen climate classification, Kamchatka generally has a subarctic climate DFC, but higher and more northerly areas have a polar climate ET. Kamchatka is much wetter and milder than eastern Siberia. It is essentially transitional from the hypercontinental climate of Siberia and northeast China to the rain-drenched subpolar oceanic climate of the Aleutian Islands. There is considerable variation, however, between the rain-drenched and heavily glaciated east coast and the drier and more continental interior valley. 
In the heavily glaciated Kronotsky Peninsula, where maritime influences are most pronounced, annual precipitation can reach as high as 2,500 mm in, whilst the southeast coast south of Petropavlovsk Kamchatsky generally receives around 1,166 mm in of rainfall equivalent per year. Considerable local variations exist. Southern parts of the Petropavlovsk Kamchatsky metropolitan area can receive as much as 430 mm more than the northern part of the city. Temperatures here are very mild, with summer maxima around 16 degrees Celsius degrees Fahrenheit and winter lows around 8 degrees Celsius degrees Fahrenheit, whilst diurnal temperature ranges seldom exceed 5 degrees Celsius degrees Fahrenheit due to persistent fog on exposed parts of the coast. South of 57 and there is no permafrost due to the relatively mild winters and heavy snow cover, whilst northward discontinuous permafrost prevails. The west coastal plain has colder and drier climate with precipitation ranging from 880 mm in, in the south to as little as 430 mm in, in the north, where winter temperatures become considerably colder at around 20 degrees Celsius The interior valley of the Kamchatka River, represented by Kluchy, has much lower precipitation at around 450 to 650 mm 18 to 26 in and significantly more continental temperatures reaching 19 degrees Celsius 66 degrees Fahrenheit on a typical summer day and during extreme cold winter spells falling as low as -41 degrees Celsius -42 degrees Fahrenheit sporadic permafrost prevails over the lower part of this valley but it becomes more widespread at higher altitudes and glaciers and continuous permafrost prevails north of 55 N. The summer months, when maximum temperatures range from 15 to 20 degrees Celsius 59 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit, are popular with tourists, but a growing trend in winter sports keeps tourism pulsing year-round. The volcanoes and glaciers play a role in forming Kamchatka's climate, and hot springs have kept alive dozens of species decimated during the last ice age. <laughs> Geology, earthquakes and volcanoes Topic. The Kamchatka River and the surrounding central side valley are flanked by large volcanic belts containing around 160 volcanoes, 29 of them still active. The peninsula has a high density of volcanoes and associated volcanic phenomena, with 19 active volcanoes included in the six UNESCO World Heritage List sites in the volcanoes of Kamchatka Group, most of them on the Kamchatka Peninsula, the most volcanic area of the Eurasian continent, with many active cones. The Kamchatka Peninsula is also known as the Land of Fire and Ice. The highest volcano is Klyuchevskaya Sopka, 4,750 meters or 15,584 feet, the largest active volcano in the northern hemisphere. While the most striking is Kronotsky, volcanologists Robert and Barbara Decker regard its perfect cone as a prime candidate for the world's most beautiful volcano. Somewhat more accessible are the three volcanoes visible from Petropavlovsk Kamchatsky, Koryaksky, Avachinsky, and Kozelsky. In the center of Kamchatka is Eurasia's world famous Geyser Valley, which was partly destroyed by a massive mudslide in June 2007. These volcanic features are the site of occurrence of certain extremophile microorganisms that can survive in extremely hot environments. Owing to the Kuril Kamchatka Trench, deep focus seismic events and tsunamis occur fairly commonly. A pair of megathrust earthquakes occurred off the coast on October 16, 1737, and on November 4, 1952, with magnitudes of approximately 9.3 and 8.2 respectively. A chain of more shallow earthquakes were recorded as recently as April 2006. A significant 7.7 magnitude earthquake with a shallow depth of 10 km occurred in the Pacific Ocean, 202 km essay of Nikolskoy, on July 18, 2017. Topic. History and exploration Topic. When the Russian explorer Ivan Moskvitin reached the Sea of Okhotsk in 1639, further exploration was impeded by the lack of skills and equipment to build seagoing ships and by the harsh land to the northeast inhabited by the warlike Koryak people. Consequently, Russians entered Kamchatka from the north. 
In 1651, after having assisted in the foundation of the Anadursk Ostrog, the explorer Mikhail Statikin went south and followed the coast of the Sea of Okhotsk from Penzina Bay to Okhotsk. From about 1667 there were reports of a Kamchatka River to the south. Some time before 1700 a group of Russians were stranded and died on Kamchatka. In 1695 explorer Vladimir Atlasov became commander of Anadursk. In 1696 he sent the Cossack Luka Morozko south. Morozko got as far as the Tigal River and returned with reports and some mysterious writings, probably Japanese. In 1697–1699 Atlasov explored nearly the whole of the peninsula. He built an ostrig at Verkhny Kamchatsk, rescued or captured a Japanese castaway, and went to Moscow to report. In 1699 the Russians at Verkhny Kamchatsk were killed on their way back to Anadursk by the Koryaks. In 1700 a punitive expedition destroyed a Koryak village and founded Nizhny Kamchatsk on the lower river. Bolskaritsk was founded in 1703. From about 1705 there was a breakdown of order. There were numerous mutinies and native wars all over the peninsula and north to the Koryak country of the Penzina River and Olyatorsky Gulf. Several people were sent out to restore order, including Atlasov, who was murdered in 1711. Vasily Merlin restored some degree of order between 1733 and 1739. There was no significant resistance after 1756. A major smallpox epidemic that hit in 1768 to 1769 quickly decimated the native population. The roughly 2,500 Itelmans present in 1773 were reduced to 1,900 in 1820, from an original population of 12,000 to 25,000. Those who survived adopted Russian customs, and there was a great deal of intermarriage, such that Kamchatl, the original Russian name for the Itelmans, came to mean any Russian or part Russian born on the peninsula. In 1713 Peter the Great sent shipbuilders to Okhotsk. A 54-foot boat was built and sailed to the Tegel River in June 1716. This one-week journey, later redirected to okhotsk bolsaretsk became the standard route to Kamchatka. In 1720 Ivan Yevronov mapped Kamchatka and the Kurils. The Danish-born explorer Vitus Bering left Nez Kamchatsk for his first voyage in 1728 and, as part of his second voyage, founded Petropavlovsk Kamchatsky in 1740. Vitus Bering's second Kamchatka expedition CA in the service of the Russian Navy, began the final opening of Kamchatka, helped by the fact that the government began to use the area to exile people, famously the Slovak explorer and rebel the Count de Benyovsky in 1770. In 1755 Stepan Krasininikov published the first detailed description of the peninsula, an account of the land of Kamchatka. The Russian government encouraged the commercial activities of the Russian-American company by granting land to newcomers on the peninsula. By 1812 the indigenous population had fallen to less than 3,200 while the Russian population had risen to 2,500. In 1854 the French and British, who were battling Russian forces in the course of the Crimean War, attacked Petropavlovsk. During the siege of Petropavlovsk, 988 men with a mere 68 guns managed to defend the outpost against six ships with 206 guns and 2,540 French and British soldiers. Despite the heroic defense, the Russians abandoned Petropavlovsk as a strategic liability after the French and British forces withdrew. The next year, when a second enemy force came to attack the port, they found it deserted. Frustrated, the ships bombarded the city and withdrew. On 24 May 1861, the ship Polar Star 475 tons, of New Bedford, wrecked on the west coast of Kamchatka during a dense fog and gale. The chief officer and a boat's crew perished while attempting to reach the shore. The rest of the crew were saved by the bark Alice, of Cold Spring, and the ship Oliver Crocker, also from New Bedford. On May 21, 1865, the American Civil War came to the area. The Confederate States Navy steamer Shenandoah sailed past the southern end of the Kamchatka Peninsula on its way to hunt United States whaling ships in the Sea of Okhotsk. As a commerce raider, the CSS Shenandoah aimed to destroy Yankee merchant shipping and thus draw off United States Navy ships in pursuit, thereby loosening the U.S. Navy blockade of Confederate coasts. 
The ship spent almost three weeks in the sea, destroying only one ship due to the dangerous ice, before moving on to the North Pacific, where it virtually captured or bonded 24 whalers, sinking most of them. The next 50 years were lean for Kamchatka. The naval port moved to Ustamur, and in 1867 Russia sold Alaska to the United States, making Petropavlovsk obsolete as a transit point for traders and explorers on their way to the American territories. In 1860, a Primorsky region was established and Kamchatka was placed under its jurisdiction. In 1875 Russia ceded the Kuril Islands to Japan in return for Russian sovereignty over Sakhalin Island. The Russian population of Kamchatka stayed at around 2,500 until the turn of the century, while the native population increased to 5,000. During the 19th century, scientific exploration of the peninsula continued. Karl von Dittmar made an important journey to the peninsula in 1851–1854. World War II (1939–1945) hardly affected Kamchatka except for its role as a launch site for the invasion of the Kurils in August 1945. After the war, the Soviet authorities declared Kamchatka a military zone. It remained closed to Soviet citizens until 1989 and to foreigners until 1990. Topic: <laughs> Fauna and Flora. Topic: Kamchatka boasts abundant flora. The variable climate promotes different flora zones where tundra and muskeg are dominant, succeeded by grasses, flowering shrubs, and forests of pine, birch, alder and willow. The wide variety of plant forms spread throughout the peninsula promotes a similar diversity in animal species that feed off the flora. Although Kamchatka is mostly tundra, deciduous and coniferous trees are abundant, and forests can be found throughout the peninsula. Kamchatka boasts diverse and abundant wildlife. This is due to many factors, including a wide range of climates, diverse topography and geography, many free-flowing rivers, proximity to the highly productive waters of the northwestern Pacific Ocean, the Bering, and the Okhotsk Seas, low human population density, and minimal development. The peninsula also boasts the southernmost expanse of Arctic tundra in the world. However, commercial exploitation of marine resources and a history of fur trapping has taken its toll on several species. Kamchatka is famous for the abundance and size of its brown bears. In the Kronotsky Nature Reserve, there are estimated to be 3 to 4 bears per 100 square kilometers. Other fauna of note include carnivores such as tundra wolf, Canis lupus albus, arctic fox, Volpes lagopus, anadyr fox, Volpes Volpes beringiana, east siberian lynx, lynx lynx rangeli, wolverine, gulo gulo, sable, martes zibelina, eurasian otter, lutra lutra, east siberian stoat, mustela ermine cane, and siberian least weasel, mustela nivalis pygmaea. The peninsula hosts habitat for several large ungulates including the Kamchatka snow sheep, reindeer Rangifer tarandus, and Chukotka moose Alces Alces bitterlini, one of the largest moose in the world and the largest in Eurasia, and rodents, leporids, including mountain hare Lepus timidus, marmot, and several species of lemming and squirrel. The peninsula is the breeding ground for Stellar's sea eagle, one of the largest eagle species, along with the golden eagle and gear falcon. Kamchatka most likely contains the world's greatest diversity of salmonid fish, including all six species of anadromous Pacific salmon Chinook, Chum, Coho, Sima, Pink, and Sakai. Due to its uniquely suitable environment, biologists estimate that a fifth of all Pacific salmon originates in Kamchatka. Kuril Lake is recognized as the biggest spawning ground for Sakai in Eurasia. In response to pressure from poaching and to worldwide decreases in salmon stocks, some 24,000 square kilometers (9,300 square miles) along nine of the more productive salmon rivers are in the process of being set aside as a nature preserve. Stickleback species, particularly Gastrostius aculeatus and Pungitius pungitius, also occur in many coastal drainages and are likely present in freshwater as well. Cetaceans that frequent the highly productive waters of the northwestern Pacific and the Okhotsk Sea include, orcas, dolls and harbor porpoises, humpback whales, sperm whales and fin whales. Less frequently, gray whales from the eastern population, the critically endangered North Pacific right whale and bowhead whale, beaked whales and mink whales are encountered. Blue whale are known to feed off of the southeastern shelf in summer. Among pinnipeds, stellar sea lions, northern fur seals, spotted seals and harbor seals are abundant along much of the peninsula. 
Further north, walruses and bearded seals can be encountered on the Pacific side, and ribbon seals reproduce on the ice of Karaginsky Bay. Sea otters are concentrated primarily on the southern end of the peninsula. Seabirds include murrelets, northern fulmers, thick and thin-billed mures, kittiwakes, tufted and horned puffins, red-faced, pelagic and other cormorants, and many other species. Typical of the northern seas, the marine fauna is likewise rich. Of commercial importance are Kamchatka crab, king crab, scallop, squid, pollock, cod, herring, halibut and several species of flatfish. Topic see also topic Maritime fur trade topic References topic topic Further reading topic Gleedhill, Diana 2007, Kamchatka, A Journal and Guide to Russia's Land of Ice and Fire, Hong Kong, Odyssey Books, ISBN 978-962-217-780-2. Topic. External links Topic. Kamchatka Travel Guide from Wikivoyage UNESCO World Heritage Site Profile Information about Kamchatka Peninsula and traveling there